Methods of protection against corrosion. Corrosion is the oxidation of iron or the breakdown of iron and this occurs in the presence of water and oxygen. So we have an oxidation reaction and a reduction reaction occurring. These two reactions here can be written as an overall redox reaction which looks like this. And what then happens is that the iron ions and the hydroxide will form iron hydroxide. This is a green or a pale green solid precipitate. This then undergoes further oxidation. It is in this reaction here, again with water and oxygen, to form iron 3 hydroxide, which then partially dehydrates to form iron oxide, which is what we commonly know as rust. We want to prevent these, or these reactions from occurring. We have very expensive structures like bridges, uh, pipes and boats that we don't want to rust. So there's several different methods that we can use to protect against iron corrosion. The first one is sacrificial anodes, applied current, metal coatings, paint and plastic and alloying. And I'm going to describe each of these to you in detail. First type is a sacrificial anode. What you do is you attach a more reactive metal to the iron. So something below it in the electrochemical series. This then will become the anode and it will corrode by oxidation. So zinc for instance here will become zinc 2 plus and produce the electrons. So iron will then act as the cathode. It doesn't need to act as the anode because something below it will be acting as the anode. And because of this, it won't corrode. And this is why you'll often, well, boats and ships will put attach lumps of zinc or magnesium to the bottom of them. They're cheaper for them to corrode away than it is for um, the iron or the, the, the hull of the ship. So let's have a look at these on the electrochemical series. Here's the two reactions that cause corrosion. It goes in the forwards direction and we have the oxidation of iron there. This is the cathode and this will act as the anode. If we have a species such as zinc, aluminium or magnesium, this will be a stronger reductant and thus these will undergo oxidation instead of the iron. So we'll take a look here at just zinc. So zinc undergo oxidation and the iron is kept safe. So this is exactly what's going on. You've got your iron here and it's being protected by your zinc. So your zinc is going to break down and the iron will act as the electrode whilst this here is undergoing reduction. If you put a lump of zinc in contact with your steel oil rig, you can see what's going to happen. It will be the zinc rather than the iron that's attacked. The moment any iron atom is attacked and loses electrons, it will immediately drag electrons from the more reactive zinc, maintaining its integrity as an iron atom. The zinc is acting as an electrode, one that's being used up or sacrificed. And because it's the electrode where oxidation happens, it's known as a sacrificial anode. The second way in which we can protect corrosion is by applying an electrical current. It uses as low voltage to supply electrons. It's a really low voltage, about the, the, as low as your torch battery. This inhibits oxidation. This would normally be your oxidation reaction and this would be your reduction reaction. Reduction wants electrons, so if we can supply those electrons from another source, this reaction's happy and will continue along. What will happen too is the electrons being produced will force the oxidation reaction pretty much backwards. Why is it going to produce electrons if there's plenty of electrons around? This is used to protect steel structures such as bridges, piers, oil rigs and underground pipes and cables. And as I said, it's such a low current it offers no danger to people or to fish or anything like that. This example a piece of bare metal is buried in the ground and comes into direct contact with the soil. 
As a result, a naturally occurring electric current flows from the metal into the surrounding soil, causing corrosion. In the cathodic protection process, the flow of any naturally occurring electric current from the pipe to the surrounding soil is stopped. The electrical current flow is reversed and subsequently flows to the pipe. The redirection of the electric current from the pipe that we're protecting, called the cathode, to what we are sacrificing on purpose called anodes, wards off nature's ability to create corrosion on the pipe. In this process, a type of system called ground beds are placed adjacent to the pipeline. A power supply induces a low voltage DC charge through the ground beds and into the soil. These electrical charges introduced at strategic points along the pipeline force the anodes to deteriorate instead of the pipeline. The electric current used in this process is similar to that generated by a flashlight battery and is harmless to humans, animals and the surrounding environment. Metal coatings. Okay, one of the easiest way to protect iron is to cover it in some sort of coating. You could use a paint or you could use a metal which is less reactive than iron. This is used with scratching is unlikely and tin plated steel cans are one of the most common ones that you'll see because the tin's on the inside and that protects the food from corroding the can. Cadmium plated steel screws are another, another one that's quite common. If scratched, the steel will corrode quite quickly because iron is the more reactive metal. And this is what we're saying here, something like tin. Iron will be preferentially oxidised but the tin will coat it. No contact of the, the water and the oxygen to the, to the iron. But as I said, if this is scratched, this is exposed, that will again, corrosion will occur quite quickly. Okay, the other thing that you've got, way to coat it, is a sacrificial coating. This is much, much, much more effective. If we use something, a stronger reductant, to coat the iron, we don't have to worry about scratching. So we're using a more reactive metal. Zinc and aluminium are the two common ones that are used. And if something is coated with those, they're said to be galvanized. You may have heard of galvanized metal before. So if scratching occurs, that's okay, because the zinc, the aluminium, or the magnesium will act as the sacrificial anode. Paint and plastic is another way of protecting it. As I said earlier, you just preventing contact of the iron with moisture or air. It's non-permanent, again if it's scratched, steel will corrode quite quickly. Alloying is another way to stop corrosion, or inhibit corrosion. You, when you're alloying, you're going to do it with small quantities of metals which will oxidise slightly in the air, and this oxidised version will actually be quite stable and will provide a protective barrier to stop any further corrosion. They're also known as inhibitors because they don't inhibit corrosion. Some examples are some chromium, some nickel, manganese, and molybdenum. This is very popular as stainless steel and used in your sinks, uh, taps, and all of those sort of things. When making choices of what to use, it always comes down to money length of time in which things are needing to be used, for instance pipes that are dug down deep underground, you obviously don't want to have to be digging those up all the time. So there's different factors involved. Another method of coating is electroplating. This covers the iron with a thin coat of another metal, like nickel or chromium. These metals undergo a redox reaction to form an oxide, which like aluminium, forms a barrier to further oxidation. 